The Road Warrior is hands down my favorite action film of all time. Every single thing that film tries to do, it accomplishes, and it tries to do a lot of different things. To me, what's most impressive is the amount of symbolism that it's managed to fit into a movie with pacing so intense that it's often referred to as one big chase scene. But what I want to discuss is the animal symbolism and how it pertains to Max finding his humanity once again. This overarching theme that I'm referring to basically says that Max and many other characters in the film are nothing more than animals. Sometimes it's point blank said. You're a maggot. Do you know who that? That is our lifeline to a, to a place beyond that vermin on machines. And this trash arrived. Hostile flame. Round and round, attack, attack. Like angry ants. And while it's not my intention to cover the first film, it is worth noting that at the beginning of the first movie, Max was basically a human, and by the end of it, he was a monster. He was mad. Now, in this film, what they've done, in order for you to be able to find this symbolism without it watering down the intense pacing of the film, is they've left you a few crumbs, basically a few times when it almost punches you in the face, but it doesn't slow things down, like the dog food can, for example, when they're eating dog food, and Max, the dog, and the gyro captain are all wanting a piece of the dog food, right? It, all three of them are equal at this moment, and it invites you to look a little bit closer if you care about those sort of things. And if you start paying closer attention, you'll notice quite a few moments like that. Moments where they basically draw a parallel between the humans and the animals. Notice in the opening chase scene when the shit's about to hit the fan, the dog knows what's up. He, he's, he's figured it out. He understands the machine enough to know what's going on here. A little surreal if you really think about it. After they win that fight and Max is collecting the fuel, notice how Max and Dog move together. Now you'll notice several times during the film, off camera you'll hear the squeaking of Max's leg brace and it sounds a lot like a whimpering dog. At times it's even difficult to tell if it's a dog or not. I have it on Laserdisc and the audio is extremely good on it compared to DVD or VHS or Betamax so it's much more pronounced but it definitely sounds like like a squeaking dog at times. And in this moment right here when the dog is keeping guard over the gyro captain and it shows the dog have a little bit more control over its own instincts than your average dog would. It's blurring the, the line again between human and animal. <gasps> we see that even the dog is more of a human in this moment here. Wes lacks the self-control that even dog has. Now after they have the scene with the dog food, and after the gyro captain finally gets some, the next day, he actually wipes his face with the napkin. He acts a little bit more human than Max does. You see another scene like this later in the film where Max and the dog are eating together and it kind of looks like the dog is actually eating out of a dish and Max is eating straight out of a can like an animal. When Max first comes to the encampment, they attack him and his dog attacks back and his dog is showing the emotion that he can't really show. He's holding it back. But the two are, again, one and the same unit. It, it, just like they moved earlier when they were gathering the fuel, they're one and the same. Notice when they first enter the gasoline compound, this young woman is holding a dog and babying it. It's not being treated like the dog that is Max's dog. This dog is, is a pampered life. It's definitely saying something about their lifestyle here. You notice that the good guys are elevated the bad guys are all on the ground now notice the bad guys are all dressed in black the good guys are all dressed in white and the bad guys all act like animals the only two individuals that blur this line are max and the feral child both max and the feral child are part animal part man 
they blur the line. One of the things that shows the feral child is part animal besides his name and everything else. I mean, look at the feral child's burrow. It even has a lizard that looks like it shares the, the hole with him. When the camp is attacked, notice the way this scene cuts back and forth between animals and people scurrying. <laughs> Now notice here, after the feral child has killed one of the bad guys and he comes into scene, there's a chicken that comes into scene at the same time. And then we see Max introduce the music box to the feral child and he acts like an animal. So the feral child's hair kind of makes him look like that chicken. And we see some of the symbolism also with Wes, with the chickens and the punk feathers here. They're having the meeting to discuss whether or not to give Max the gasoline to go get the big rig and bring it back or not. Notice what's in the center of the shot outside of the tent. Here the gyro captain and his would-be girlfriend are talking to Max and they're both holding a chicken. The captain holding one that's presumably dead and the girl holding one that she is being coddled. Is this an allusion to the two quote-unquote chickens that I pointed out earlier? Is one of these Wes and one of these the feral child? Notice here the dog food is alluded to again and alluded to as something that not good for men. I'm gonna eat it. So find your own. Get, get out of it. I got a recipe to make. Delicious. Fricassee of reptile. Get out. Better than your dog food. No! And notice his reaction to the helicopter is pretty animal-like. No! When Max makes the run to escape, and when the car flips, him and the dog once again in unition come out. And this is when the animal Max is killed. He's symbolically dead now. The gyro captain, his quote-unquote partner, comes and lifts him up above the animals and brings him back to the camp of the good guys. When he wakes up, once again, it's a chicken and the feral boy. And in a reversal of what happened earlier, the feral boy brings Max his stuff, even though Max had thrown his stuff out earlier, showing the, even the feral boy has a little bit more humanity than Max does. You see the kid sneak on the car like a dog, and you see Wes on a leash like a dog. And after the rig crashes, and you're wondering if Max and the kid are alive or dead, you have your moment of rebirth. No longer is it just him taking care of himself. He sits up and he's got that kid in his arms. He's, he's a different man now. Now, it wasn't just Max that was reborn as a human in that moment. In the exposition at the end, you also hear that the kid was reborn as a human. You can tell that by listening to his voice. Not only is he the leader, but he sounds civilized and intelligent. No longer is he a feral child, he's a human. As for me, I grew to manhood. In the fullness of time, I became the leader, the chief of the great northern tribe. A lot of people have said that Max doesn't show any emotion until the end of the film in this scene here. And that's not exactly true. There's a couple other times in the movie he has shown emotion. The difference in this scene here is it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. That's not just for survival. It's not like that. It, this is, a, this is a, a much more nuanced, much more human moment. This is when you can see that Max has regained his humanity. One of the reasons that I love this film so much is because of this depth of symbolism and nuance and hidden storytelling that is right there under your nose the entire time that you're watching shit blow up and people die and their eyeballs bulge out of their head and splat, boom, bang. It's beautiful. 
I love this movie so much. It, it touches so many levels and does so many things right that it's almost no matter what mood I'm in, this is the perfect film for it. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Please consider giving this video a like and a comment and maybe even subscribe. See you next time. Disappointed. Again, you have made me unleash my dogs of war.